and not something to be exploited by some stupid towel! I am not a towel! Yeah, yeah, sure thing, Randy. You're not a towel. Oh god, allergies. Hey, dead mom, at least in the Paramount Plus specials, Randy is the greatest of pretenders. I wish his perfect picket fences would impale him through the heart. He wouldn't believe the mess this plotline has become. That was terrible. So terrible. Like this plotline. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park. Or more specifically, Randy Marsh and his downward trajectory at Tegrity Farms. A plot line everybody dislikes. Except Johnny Tuchello's. Go watch his video. It's pretty informative. Anyhow, happy holidays! Can't say the real holiday due to standards and practices, and I can't partake in the holiday due to being on medication. Even if it would massively help my mental health. We reached our goal for the PMD campaign. Thank you so much. Anyhow, light one for me. Now, I know I said I was gonna do Tally this week, but I figured Randy would be a better catch, as there'd be more to talk about. What's Tally got going for him? That he's a towel? You're a towel! I am a person, but I use an avatar that takes the shape of a cat to communicate with strangers on the internet. Let's not waste any time with super long intros like usual. And sorry if you hear a fan in the background. It's really hot. Let's start from the beginning. First off, who is Randy Marsh? Obviously, you can watch all 300 episodes of Sal Park and not know who this darling deer is. Now, Sal Park is all about the boys, first and foremost, but as the show branched out, they began to involve their families. Among those were their fathers, except Carbon, because his father is now chilly. Randy came in as Dan's father, and similar to his son, he was a straight man that sort of went with the flow originally, as he was based on Trey Park father, who was the exact same way. Oh my god, a volcano! As time went on, Randy became a typical cartoon father, an idiot who involved others in his stupid schemes, and this might have proven to be terrible. But unlike, say, Peter Griffin, I'd say he at least cares about his children, which is very important, albeit it's in his own stupid, screwed up way. He's just like Stan Smith, where his selfishness usually blinds him to their needs. Not that I'm excusing him, it just somehow works a little better. Besides, he still funny, and above all else, that's what really matters. Ever since Randy has gotten the spotlight, he's also gotten many great subplots, like Moonlighting is Lord, or joining the PC Frat Brothers. In recent years, Randy has gotten a little bit of flack for what many presume to be hogging up the spotlight, all thanks to his job at Tegrity Farms. This saw Randy become a pot farmer, because for some reason I'm not allowed to say the W word, and the Walter White of South Park's growing pot industry. Say my name. Well, I, I don't know your name. Is it Randy or Karen? In the first episode, which also shares the title with the arc, Randy gets called into the principal's office. Upon learning, Shelly sent a boy inappropriate photos of herself. Actually, it belongs to a dog, but it's still terrible. Seriously? That's what we're doing now, huh? That's what it's all come to? Shelly? Randy thinks the world has gone to crap, and likely having another midlife crisis, convinces Sharon to sell the house and move the family out into the wilderness. There, they will live off of the fat of the land, raise rabbits, George, and make money while doing so. On the farm, they will sell pot, which in Colorado is one of the most important cash crops of all. Sweet old Mary Jane. Too bad Orvi has looked at her, and now she's condemned forever to Hadestown. Let's move out to the country. Go back to simple living when things mattered, like hard work and integrity. Randy, look, Frazier and Lilypad tried to live in nature during Cheers, and the results were not pretty. You sure you really want to repeat their efforts? Think you can do it better? Nobody likes living on the farm, Stan included. I hate you so much. I think we're having a breakthrough moment. 
but Randy is positively thriving. Better yet, he has also gotten Tally to work as partner. Notice that Tally was originally a pot inspector earlier in this episode. With this vesting device, I can check not only the THC levels in your product, but also detect any impurities and give you a final score based on overall chemical makeup. Meaning, Randy has a better way to make sure his crop is up to standard. Things seem to be going well for him until he learns about wussy sticks or something that rhymes with wussy. Look, sorry, I'm not allowed to say the V word either for some reason. YouTube's weird. Oh, well, I hope you didn't pack your integrity, because clearly your integrity ain't going. Yes, people have been known to put pot into pens. That's not what Randy is going for. He's all natural. His breaking point comes when Stan gets caught with one. He didn't actually just watch the episode. This Randy cannot stand for. He's been running a farm for four whole days. Get up to your room right now! Way to underreact, Sharon! And Wussy Sticks are destroying his way of life. After taking out the distributors, Randy decides that he will stay on the farm permanently with his family, much to everybody's happiness. And this kicks off the several season long plot point of Tegrity Farms. You know what? Yeah. South Park. Yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm just, I'm done. I don't give two yeah. shit about South Park. All that matters is Tegrity Farms now. You know, as a kid, I had dreams of living on a farm or somewhere out in nature, like in Gatlinburg. But as a city dwelling adult, I am firmly on Stan's side. Farms suck outside of super quick vacations or day trips. Seriously, there are no pokey stops and no Wi Fi for miles. Okay, then, I'm sure you're curious what I think about Tegrity Farms. Overall, it's complicated. Honestly, I don't mind the concept. For one, it makes sense to Randy's character to suddenly argue in favor of pot. Remember the episode Medicinal Fried Chicken? Randy is freaking overjoyed when he discovers pot is legal in Colorado, only to learn that it's only legal for sick people or those who are terminally ill or going through treatments. AIDS patients, cancer patients, you know, people going through chemo. The THC helps them eat and take the pain. You are in fine shape. To get his sticks, he took advantage of the law by putting his huevos in a microwave. And after he got sick, he was able to smoke as much as he wanted. Now, the good news is it hasn't spread anywhere. We should probably schedule to have them removed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for now, can I finally get my prescription, please? The point I'm trying to make is pot interests Randy. And he lives in Colorado. You know, the pot capital of America. Meanwhile, South Park is no stranger to season-long plot points, or even subplots. Outside of the whole plotline with Garrison Trump, aka Grump, you can get a lot of mileage out of something like like this. However, I do agree with a few criticisms. For example, I think Tegrity Farms took up too much of the spotlight. I don't mind, say, Stan wearing a Tegrity shirt every episode, as that just fits in with Sal Park's little bouts of continuity, like a friendly reminder here and there. That's all I need. However, I don't think they should have had, say, Randy singing his own theme song, or the Tegrity Halloween special, or this or that. One episode, okay, two, it's pushing it a little bit, but still works. An entire season, though. No, 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 no way. To show you what I mean, take a look at, say, Kenny's death in season six. While his death heavily factored into that season going forward, as it allowed Butters to take center stage, not every episode was about Kenny not being there. Picture this: instead of, say, Butters' very own episode or Professor Chaos, or even child abduction is not funny, whenever we met the boys, they would be mourning Kenny in some different way. Oh, he was our friend. That would suck, right? That's integrity for you. Beyond that, I also think the rest of the marshes not exactly liking the farm is another problem. Say what you want about Family Guy. When they bought a farm, everybody loved it. Getting in some together time. I have a crossbow! Chris has a crossbow. I don't mind, say, Randy inconveniencing his wife to cook cream fraiche, or thinking alcoholism is like cancer and making Stan his nursemaid simply because they're one episode each. 
he's going to be back to normal next week. And it's fun to see what they come up with next time. Here, I can't enjoy how Randy upended these people out of their lives just to chase a stupid dream and annoy the crap out of them. That's what Peter's supposed to do, and you don't want to be Peter. But let's take a more in-depth look, starting with season 23, probably one of the most contentious seasons of South Park. What am I watching? Integrity Farms. Excluding Dick Man, it's probably better than anything else Comedy Central turns out. Until they decide to cancel it to make room for reruns of The Office or Seinfeld. Clearly everybody wants that. Anyhow, things technically begin in the episode Mexican Joker. Business has been strong for Randy, at least until he realizes that people have stopped going to his farm. Not because they suddenly hate pot. What kind of show is this? Rather, it's because Colorado allows people to grow their own, and many people, such as Steve and Chris, have started doing it as a hobby. Something wrong with Tegarty? No, I just started kind of getting into it. I just enjoy the whole- You're stealing my idea, Steven! Oh, how I wish Jersey could let us do this. And I know the episode probably doesn't bring it up, but there's also the fact that Randy himself is like an hour away from South Park at minimum. Even Stan said how much it sucks living on a farm. Yeah, it takes me like an hour to get to school now. It sucks. All because Shelly bribed the playground monitor. Just saying, Randy, most people probably are not going to want to go out of their way to drive an hour for something they can have in their own backyard. Imagine how much an Uber is going to cost. Then there's also the fact that farms are usually difficult to get to, or at least they are in my experience. And it gets worse if you're like me and you don't have a car and have to rely on public transport. In response, Randy tries every possible way to ban a homegrown pot, such as having stay and testify before the city council. As the son of a proud American farmer, I am concerned about what homegrown can lead to. What? Yeah, that's right. yeah, come on. Somehow, this does not work. Thankfully, Randy is approached by a major company, and they aren't related to the old wussy stick. They hate that people get to grow their own pot, and they want to join forces with Randy to put an end to it. You guys want to team up and piggyback on the goodwill of the legalization movement for some good old-fashioned crony capitalism? I'm totally in. Before we go any further, I want to make a point. This is how I think they should have ended the arc. It's theory and character for Randy to stick to his morals until something better comes along, or to save his own skin. I don't know. And even if I did know, well, I'd probably tell you because I don't want to be here anymore. I could totally buy him being stubborn and telling everybody, I'll never say integrity to those big city folk. And then some conglomerate offers him a million dollars and he just moves back to South Park and forgets about the last week. Then because of, say, taxes or bad investments, he only makes enough to afford a new house. Oh well, we can all dream. Now, where was I? Oh yeah. Randy bands together with some rich people to get rid of homegrown Mary Jane. Sally, however, does not want this. The guy who believed in integrity. I don't understand who you even are anymore. Tangent time makes up for not having a tally video. I think this is as good a time as any to give my Tegrity Farms headcanon. Normally, when I don't like watching something, I'll go Eric Cartman and play mental gymnastics. I did it for the last few seasons of Game of Thrones. When I watch the Tegrity Farms episodes, I like to tell myself that Tally isn't real when he's around Randy. Maybe he was the pot inspector we saw in the first episode, and then, much like Fight Club, he gave Randy the idea. But he's not real real. He's Randy's conscience. Are you still here? I, I, I didn't know chickens wore suspenders. However, because of how it works, sometimes he makes Randy continue the business, other times, no. Where's the real tally? Off somewhere. Probably getting high. For me, the reasoning is because nobody besides Randy usually acknowledges him. They just tune him out. In Christmas Snow, he's nothing but a towel, despite Randy talking to him at one point. Like, you'd think he would have talked to Santa. Hold on tight, Tally! We have to save Christmas! Again, it's probably not true, but it does make it fun to watch. Only hole in the theory is Token's dad does acknowledge him. You can always claim something else. Randy does not give a flying
Lang Fig. Not about this theory, and not about Tally. It's by Tally arguably being the dude who got him to this point. Then Randy, full of anger and bottled up resentment and denial, does what he does best and destroys everything in sight. With fire. What's the harm done? People will have to buy from Tegrity again. In bands in China, Randy finds another solution to his problem. Sell the crop abroad, such as in China. Really, China? I'm not knocking them. And YouTube is banned in China, but really, China? One, I don't think pot is legal there. And two, yeah, pretty much just that. Aren't there plenty of other countries where pot is legal that have high populations which you can market to, like Uruguay or Thailand, or even a next door neighbor like Canada or Mexico? I mean, it's kind of legal in the Netherlands, but no, you're gonna endure an 18 hour flight, and yes, it's 18 hours, I googled, simply to sell pot there. You deserve whatever's coming to you. But let's hear out Randy's logic, shall we? Turns out there's a lot of people in China. If we can get like 2% of that market to buy our weed, we'd make millions of millions of dollars. And he would rather do that over go see his own son perform at Autumn Fest. Stan, you need to wear your Tegarty t-shirt at the performance. You could really help promote the family business while I'm gone. But then again, I guess family doesn't mean all that much to you. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is why nobody likes Tegrity outside of Johnny Two Cellos. Let's take a look at another Randy episode, Nightmare on FaceTime. That episode works because they show just how stupid and harebrained his idea is. Nobody rents videos anymore. They can just go on Netflix or Hulu or Crackle. Is that still a thing? I thought it was still a thing. And this was back when the show was only episodic, meaning you know there would probably be no consequences. Wait, I'm rambling. What I liked was how, in that episode, Stan was able to find ways around it, like using an iPad to go trick-or-treating when his father forbid him from leaving the store. Alright, where should we trick-or-treat first? How about we try the Barkers? Oh, no, looks like they're not home. Here, he kind of does that, though ultimately it goes nowhere. Randy goes to China. First time going to China? Uh, no, not really. It's my first time. God, Randy is like that one chatty cafe on public transit. Where's a Buddha box when you need one? Oh, hey, <laughs> fuck you. Just saying. Randy goes to China, his suitcase lined with the green stuff. And wouldn't you know, the Chinese government does not approve of him promoting something illegal to their citizens. Meaning he is thrown into prison where he meets. Oh, who's there? Nobody, just a bear. Stolas' original voice actor? Wait, this begs another question. If something is banned in China in real life, does that mean that it gets arrested in South Park's version of China? Let's say the boys went to China for a special episode. Would they get arrested? Mickey Mouse, himself fresh off of canceling the Owl House, arrives in China, angry that somebody is trying to say something negative about his biggest marketplace. The Chinese seem to exploit their own people with forced labor. You know, I guess maybe it's because too much time has passed, but I'm shocked he did not make fun of Doctor Strange. If only because there was that whole controversy with Tilda Swinton, and it would fit in with the episode's message that American companies often cave in to Chinese politics. Mickey meets Randy, who has some choice words. You really think that business should be run through intimidation and fear? There's one thing you don't have. That's integrity. These would be words Randy would later regret. Mickey Mouse and Randy try to argue in favor of integrity, which feels like a metaphor for something. Sadly, the Chinese government won't go for it. Again, feels like a metaphor for something. On the bright side, this somehow gets Randy out of prison. Randy, be glad you did not try to sell your product in Thailand, because the penalty for making fun of the king of Thailand, his wife, and or heir, is a prison sentence of 3 to 15 years 
her charge. Gasp. I just made a joke about them. No, now I can never go to Bangkok. Still, that should be an episode. Mickey Mouse thinks the reason China doesn't like them is because of Winnie the Pooh. But some Chinese people on the internet started posting pictures of their president as Winnie the Pooh. It's a real thing. Look it up. No, really. The government says that so long as Randy makes sure Winnie the Pooh stays in the honey tree and never comes out, they'll make it worth his wild. And so he does. Perhaps I will share in just a few more slurps. Uh, what happened to Piglet? Like, I know their main problem was with Winnie, but I've always questioned this part of the episode. Piglet's still associated with him. Imagine if, say, China banned Disney. Yet Elsa and Anna are still somehow allowed. Just doesn't make sense. Do they let him go? Let him fend for himself? Lock him up in the Disney vault? On the bright side, at least Randy is back at the farm. Then there's shots. AK a.k.a. the show's 300th episode. This should be good, right? Whenever South Park has an important milestone like this, they often go all out. For their 200th episode, they made fun of one of the most forbidden topics ever, the Prophet Muhammad. And I will not bow down to terrorist threats because not all Muslims are terrorists. And also my apology video will be out in May, let's say like Cinco de Mayo. Here, they don't do anything special really. Happy 300 to us. Happy 300, Tegrity Farms. Ah. Outside of this brief scene, you probably wouldn't know it was such a big deal. It just feels like any other episode. But first, let's talk about this episode's plot before I get to my main complaints. Randy is allowed to sell pot in China, somehow. It's to plant on their student protesters so they can put them in jail! That's how. Just a fun fact, around the time this episode aired, the Hong Kong protests were going on, and Cell Park ended up getting banned in China for that one specific episode. In response, the Hong Kong protesters played the episode on a busy street as part of their protest. That's awesome. While Randy enjoys the sweet money he's getting from Tegrity, Tally doesn't like that he's gone full Adam Levine and sold out. Randy doesn't see his point of view until a chat from Leanne. When we're afraid of being judged, we can push our family away. Taking her advice, he decides to stop doing business with China, and the two are able to make up. <laughs> this is it. This is the moment that Tegrity Farms got back on track. Sweet, huh? Okay, time for criticism. Throughout the video, the main point I've been making is people don't like Tegrity because it hogs up the spotlight. Every single plotter episode, until Buddha Box, and this one season is about Tegrity in some way, shape, or form. Even the freaking theme song changes. But I hate to say it, this still could have worked. Because let's take a look at Let Them Eat Goo, which did pretty well to balance the main show out with Tegrity. As a result, it's probably my favorite Tegrity episode after Banned in China. Randy's business has not been doing so great as of late. Hey, that rhymes. For one, Randy has no idea how money works, and because he stopped doing business with China, he lost all of that sweet Chinese money. His words, not mine. We no longer get any of that sweet Chinese money. See? And he has no money sense. If you don't make commercials or do more parades for the town, we'd have more money. Right, cut out all our marketing. That's Sharon's great idea, everyone. Meanwhile, he learns from Tyler Durden, aka Tally, that they have too much leftover crop and proposes the idea of selling it off as mulch in order to make extra money and cover their marketing. Sell that crap as mulch to a hardware company. Mulch. Use our discarded product to recover costs. Which isn't a bad idea, not gonna lie. True, Randy should probably cut back, but what's wrong with making a little extra money on the side? Even if it's just 10 cents a pound. On the way to sell the leftovers, they decide to stop for lunch and go to Burger King to try the Impossible Whopper which I am currently eating as I write this portion of my script. If you're unaware, Impossible Burgers are a type of plant-based burger that are supposed to be meatless. They're an alternative to normal burgers. Well, 
which tastes like <laughs> Yeah, it's plant-based. Honestly, while I'm not the biggest fan of every meatless burger, although Hard Rock has a pretty good one, I don't think they're terrible or nasty by any stretch. The Impossible Whopper basically tastes the same, just a little more burnt. Nothing some ketchup and barbecue sauce can't fix. Only sucky part is, they're a little more expensive, at least for me. What I liked about this episode is how they had Tegrity and the boys focus on the same issue. Band in China did something similar by showing how businesses cave into China. Randy sold his soul to them just to make an extra buck, and Stan wanted to write his own musical while getting past Chinese censors. Randy supported them. Stan walked away. I want to be proud of who we are, guys. And anybody who would betray their ideals just to make money in China isn't worth a lick of spit. Here, they talk about impossible burgers. And they go beyond that. Beyond meat. Randy, it's impossible burgers. With the boys, it's meatless alternatives. I am a little regretful I did not get to cover this episode. When I talked about the Wendy and Cartman episodes, it's hilarious. Then again, that video got limited ads, even with manual review, then copyrighted, so maybe it's a blessing in disguise. The girls, led by Wendy, try to go all Sam Manson and argue for the school to introduce impossible alternatives, saying it'll help stop climate change. The millions and millions of cows and pigs and chickens that we harvest every year are a huge reason for climate change. But will it stop? man bear pig. I am super cereal. Cartman doesn't like it solely because he's not really eating meat, causing him to constantly have heart problems. I'm trying to just enjoy some simple goddamn barbecue ribs and a dick and a Imagine if he had tofu. With the boys, I like how they made the point that impossible burgers are not much healthier than normal burgers. Sure, you're not killing cows or anything, but they're just as salted and processed as normal food. Which is true? Why do we keep pretending that it's not true? I thought you guys were all trying to force me to eat healthy, but I've learned that a lot of this stuff is made in a factory and processed with tons of salt, just like all my favorite foods. Besides, that's kind of the point. They're just vegetarian alternatives, and not everything vegetarian is healthy. Oreos are vegetarian, should I be eating those every day? In the end, Cartman is fine with eating what's essentially goo. As he describes, I wanted to be able to eat the same garbage I always have, and this is definitely garbage. And hey, if it happens to be more ethical and sustainable, well, I guess I'm fine with that too. And as for Randy, well, he tried his hand at making impossible burgers out of leftover pot. It actually works. Even Mrs. Nelson loves his burgers. Teacher? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I have questions. Mostly, why did she not have an actual character until the episode where she got sick? And also, if you were able to eat an entire burger like that, would you actually get high? Just, just, just asking for a friend. Only there's one problem. Go on, chew! As Randy has been advocating for his customers to turn vegan, well, this is South Park, where when one person is into something, the whole town follows suit. Because flying spaghetti monster forbid they have personalities or minds of their own. This means that he's upset the delicate balance of nature. And now, there's a bunch of cows on his property. Come on, Mr. Plant-Based Burgers here is gonna take care of you now. Yeah, don't worry, he cares about the environment so he can figure out what to do with you. Well, Randy, you wanted to live on a farm, and farm usually means both animals and crops, unlike ranches which only cater to animals. Weirdly, this seems like another opportunity. I'm sure cows contribute to farming outside of just eating grass or making milk. Randy wanted to make compost, now he can. Or he could use them to help grow his crops. Or he does tours, maybe put in a petting zoo. Or something else entirely. Can't you find anyone else to take them? Nobody wants cows anymore! They're bad for climate change! Randy, as the king of great decisions, decides to unalive the cows. Why? Well, first he has to smoke a duber. What I 
are you complaining about? At least Randy never tried to unalive feel. Wait, what am I saying? The legal name is Tortured Baby Cows. The problem with Shots was, ignoring how it was a mediocre episode, Tegrity kind of took away from what was an admittedly funny Cartman episode. However, that doesn't mean they couldn't make fun of the many medical uses of pot outside of the medicinal stuff. South Park has done several episodes on alternative medicine, and they were really good. With pot, there's actually several parts to it that we tend to use chemically. As far as I know, there might be more. There's THC, the stuff that gets you high, and CBD, which is used for other stuff, usually pains or aches. I don't think they made an episode yet on CBD, and it's weird they haven't. What does Randy think about it? Is it just wussy pot? Maybe Cartman's actions inspire other parents to forego vaccinating their kids, or even taking them to the doctor, period, so they look for an alternative. Randy could try and make some type of miracle drug out of CBD and sell that to people. The episode could make the point that wall pot is beneficial for a lot of things. It doesn't actually replace medicine. It just makes life a little easier. Anyhow, this leads into season finale. Not THE season finale, just season finale. Season 24 still has four more episodes, which outside of Board Girls are actually really good. This episode sees Randy finally succumb to karma for all of the torment he's put upon the town of South Park and the viewers as a whole. Does he shoot somebody and get hit with a stray shell? Thankfully, no. One morning, Randy and Tally are doing a podcast, which, hey, good moneymaker, when suddenly agents come in ready to arrest the former, not the latter, because Tally is not wrong. What do you think of my show? My Tegrity Farm show! Remember all of the crazy stuff Randy did in the previous episodes? Let's start with the first one, burning the homegrown pot. In real life, that would be a problem, as everybody has surveillance like crazy nowadays. Well, it wouldn't be a problem with most cartoons because of something called suspension of disbelief, where we pretend that nobody has cameras. But in South Park, Tweak's family has money and the ability to afford them. People are fed up, Marsh. Hey, it's the only way to teach their son about strangers. Everybody blamed it on Mexican Joker. Now they have proof. Everyone's had enough of Tegrity Farms. Thank you. The town decides to try Randy for his crimes, meaning there's only one out. Call the man who gets indicted for everything, really. Grump. Does he run his own shrimp company? Hi, Mr. Ger uh, Mr. President. I I'm really sorry to bother you. Look, uh, I'm in a bit of trouble. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. Grump tells Randy that he can get him out of prison if he Darbo's. Did, did I what? Oh, jeez. Darvo, Randy. Deny, attack, reverse victim, and offender. Apparently this is also a real thing. If that doesn't help, you can always chant, I love Frick. I love Rick, and hope for the best. Meanwhile, nobody actually cares that Randy might be in prison for years. I mean, he's not going to. He's a main character. His family is especially delighted. I'm like, could it be years? It could be, sweetheart. We don't know. Yes! Is it possible he could get out of it? Of course it's possible, honey. Yes. <laughs> Sharon realizes that this means they can move back to South Park and sell the farm. And I think it's weirdly sweet and also kind of sad. Sharon even throws a huge party, inviting all of their old neighbors. We wanted to bring you guys a lasagna. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. You know, people often criticize Sharon for staying with Randy in spite of all this. And I do agree. But I think many of you are forgetting the cynicism two-parter, where Sharon told Stan that she got back together with Randy just because... We know it's what's best for you kids, and, and as you get older, you realize the best thing to do is just stick with what you know. Not saying this is a mindset I agree with. I think if you're staying with somebody for the children, it's not love, it's a hostage situation. But they already explained this. Meanwhile, in jail, not prison, there is a difference, Randy is not able to get his precious green stuff. He can only get this green stuff. No! Not that 
green stuff! It's the green stuff you deserve. And he starts to feel regret for his actions. Starting to realize I have this pattern of behavior where I always want more. It's never enough. Unfortunately, Darvo doesn't work because he isn't a celebrity or an elected official. You need to turn your life around! That's not going to work, Mr. Marsh. You're not the president of the United States. Ah, poop. But this turnaround does seem pretty genuine, and I'm all here for it. He decides to plead guilty, despite the advice of Grump and the former mayor of New York. Really? He was the former mayor of New York? I didn't know that. And he married his cousin? Former mayor of New York. I can't say his name. I'm sorry. He's like Professor Buttmunch. Attempts to get Randy to return to his old ways through any means necessary. My name is Mr. Giuliani. I've been sent to try and help you. No, you're gonna undo his character development. I can't believe I'm being attacked here. You people are monsters. No, it worked. No. No, I can't do this. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, then. Somehow, Randy gets exonerated of all charges. I think because of a separate plot line I didn't really get into. And he returns home with a brand new attitude. He will not grow pot until the spring. The snow is falling and he can't plant any new crops. That's progress. Clearly, something is stopping him from just growing stuff indoors like everybody else, or like he does in the later episodes. They will still live at Tegrity Farms, for some reason. He just won't work until spring comes. One thing I will acknowledge is that the crew kind of realized that while they like to write for Randy, not everybody is a fan, so they toned down his presence going forward, sort of compromising. To this day, Tegrity Farms is still a part of South Park. However, it's not the main part of South Park. It pops up from time to time, and we do get an episode every so often that just makes it more of a treat. Like in Christmas Snow, which is actually later in the season and it's pretty good, the town can't get alcohol in time for Christmas. As a compromise, they go to Randy, who sells them Christmas snow, which is literally just normal pot but laced with coke. Santa Claus, who was the one behind the ban, doesn't like it at first, until he realizes just how pure it is. No, you can tell it's really clean. Santa likey. I think it's safe to say Randy is bigger than Heather Chandler, who was bigger than John Lennon, who was bigger than Jesus, because the J-man himself loves the Christmas snow. It's Tegrity. Well, maybe we all do need a little Tegrity at Christmas time. Even in season 25, they still have Tegrity Farms, but they show just how much of a bad idea it is for him to keep going. Like in the big fix, where we see how much of a racist dude he is. Outside of that one time he said a racial slur on national television. He goes to a convention where he learns that white-owned businesses don't do so well nowadays. Bottom line is this. A completely white-owned weed business these days just isn't going to survive. So he brings on board Stephen Black, Token's father. Over there are our cleanup vats, and up here we have our first stage drying racks. Oh, real quick. Look at him, learning from the PC frat brothers. Steve actually has some pretty good ideas of his own. We do seven different strains in all, representing the dwarves, the elves, even the Urukai. Too bad Randy doesn't want to promote any of them. He just wants to advertise the fact that he's a black puppy hanging out with a white puppy. Steve is the black puppy and Randy is the white puppy. I got them confused, I'm sorry. And this is a song in the episode because Randy could not get the rights to Ebony and Ivory by Paul McCarthy. Because Randy treated Steve horribly, Steve starts his own pot company, Credit Gray. And as he's a much better businessman, he actually gets results. I'll show you some real nice weed made with Tegrity. These people don't even belong here. Wow, bro, you're a racist. On the bright side, this gives Stan a trusted next door neighbor and a friend, as now Token's there. And like him, Token likes to play board games, much to Randy's dismay. Get this little yeah. out of my house. Dad. Get him out of here, he's a spy. Fortunately, this rivalry is very one-sided. That brings us to the streaming wars. Because he's been such a jerk to everybody, Randy has turned into a Karen. 
on the eve of the full moon, or whenever he doesn't get his way, or feels frightened, or the wind blows, or a day ends in Y, he turns into a literal Karen. Like a manager I could speak to some- no. No. Randy is saddened by this after he learns that he went full-blown Karen and coupled with the drought, decides that the only logical thing to do is to return to his old identity as a geologist. I wanted to be a scientist because scientists solve problems. I was a fluvial geomorphologist, someone who studies the changes in streams and rivers. It is only through old Randy that he will be able to solve the drought, and his head will be clear enough to make some changes. Randy, it's good to have you back at the U.S. Geological Survey. Thanks, Nelson. <laughs> That's better. Randy comes up with a plan to help the town fight the salination, i.e. taking the salt out of salt water in order to turn it into fresh water. As nobody likes pee, me included, this actually made the episode really gross, they all go for his plan. The only problem is getting enough salt water out to the town. Colorado is landlocked. The problem is actually getting enough pressure to get the salt water up here to the plant. It almost seems impossible. Good thing they have Cartmans in plants. And just as production is about to get underway, it gets wrecked. What are you talking about? It was climate change, Randy! Meaning Randy has to do a last resort. Lock his family in the basement, smoke one last time, and go full nuclear Karen. It is truly a sight to behold. I want in your water park right now! The park's closed. I want to speak to your manager! Seems to be the end of Tegrity, right? Have you even been watching this video? Randy is still at Tegrity in the newest season. What? You guys admitted that Randy worked better as a geologist and you- What? This isn't pissing me off, it's just making me really confused. However, Japanese toilets makes up for it and I will end this video by encouraging you to go watch it. I won't bore you any longer because it's a holiday weekend. Go watch the episode, go eat a bag of Funyuns, and then do what you gotta do. Bye!